Well, thank you for coming today. And after 19 short years, Pow Wow will be back in San Francisco. For only the second time in the history of Pow Wow, we'll be celebrating Pow Wow in San Francisco. So thanks to our friends in Sonoma County, we have uh, some champagne to raise a toast to San Francisco Pow Wow 2011. Let's raise our glasses. Cheers. Thanks. Mm, there'll be a lot more of this in San Francisco next year when you come, too. Um, we are planning some excellent activities in San Francisco for Pow Wow next year. Not only is Pow Wow going to be your typical business exchange, your opportunity to network with, with uh, your friends and your colleagues and your customers from around the world, but it's going to be a great way to re-experience San Francisco. Opening night, we're calling it Rock the Night. It's going to be an opportunity to see Alcatraz, one of our famed national parks that we looked at, looked at, um, at the luncheon yesterday. We're going to be sponsored by Hornblower Cruises, Pier 39, and the wonderful partners at Fisherman's Wharf for an unforgettable opening night of Pow Wow. There's going to be a lot more activities that we're going to be seeing during the course of Pow Wow. What we want to do today is to tell you a little bit about what's going to be happening next year in San Francisco and also some of the new things that's going on in San Francisco. As you know, we're going to have the opportunity to experience some great food and wine when we're there. San Francisco has become a reputation of really one of America's culinary capitals and really the heart of the slow food movement in, in the United States. We have around the Bay Area, around San Francisco, some of the greatest opportunities for organic food, produce, seafood, food and wine, and you're going to be able to experience a lot of that when you're in San Francisco. We also have, as you know, still the famous hills, the cable cars, the neighborhoods, the Golden Gate Bridge, but we have a lot of new things happening in San Francisco. We're going to share some of those for you right now. First of all, San Francisco's newest museum that just opened last year is the Walt Disney Family Museum. You think that might be odd. It's not in Orlando or it's not in Anaheim. But this museum is actually the collection, the private collection of the Walt Disney family. In it is three historic buildings within the Presidio of San Francisco, which is also part of the National Park Service, where 10 galleries are devoted to the inspiring story of Walt Disney, the creator of Mickey Mouse, Snow White, and the Seven Dwarfs, and everything from the films to the creation of the parks. This is a private family collection where you'll see everything from the original Mickey Mouse that Walt Disney personally drew to the development of some of his major feature films. It's a fantastic new museum that just opened last year. In Golden Gate Park, the new California Academy of Science reopened in September of 2008. And it's the only institution in the world that combines a natural history museum, an aquarium, and a planetarium under one roof. Designed by the award-winning architect Renzo Piano, California Academy is now the most visited cultural attraction in San Francisco. Cal Academy was designed to be the greenest museum in the world and has earned the highest possible LEED Platinum rating. The new academy is topped with a living roof, which you can see there in the picture, and is insulated with um, blue, recycled blue jeans and is supported by re recycled steel and, and powered in part by solar panels. Our Tuesday night event, excuse me, our Monday night event next year at Powell will be at Golden Gate Park, hosted by the De Young Museum, the California Academy of Science, the San Francisco International Airport, and Golden Gate Park. And it's going to be full of San Francisco surprises, and you'll be able to see these fantastic new facilities. This spring, the San Francisco Convention and Visitor Bureau developed a cooperative partnership with the city's most highly regarded art museums and cultural institutions and called it Art Bash 2010. This campaign highlights the summer's world-class exhibitions that are encouraging visitors to add art to their experience when they come to San Francisco. Beginning this May through October, San Francisco will be the only city in the world to host such an extraordinary array of art in just 49 square miles. San Francisco Museum of Modern Art recently announced an unprecedented partnership with Doris and the late Don Fisher, the founders of the Gap clothing chain, to provide a home for their collection of more than 1,000 pieces of contemporary art, one of the most important private collections of contemporary art in the world. The exhibition includes pieces by many celebrated contemporary artists, including Alexander Calder and Andy Warhol, and will serve as a centerpiece for San Francisco Museum of Modern Art's year-long 75th anniversary entitled 75 Years of Looking Forward. Since 1979, Shanghai, one of the largest metropolitan areas in the world, has been a sister city of San Francisco, and the ties between the two cities go back more than 140 years. This year, there'll be many events in both Shanghai and San Francisco to celebrate this sister city relationship. And these include events at the World Expo in Shanghai, as well as in San Francisco, including an exhibit at the Asian Art Museum featuring Shanghai and the contemporary works and historic works in Shanghai. 
at the De Young Museum in Golden Gate Park, which I mentioned is right across from the California Academy of Sciences, where we will be hosting our event on Monday night, is two consecutive special exhibits this year. Both of them are from the Musée d'Orsay in Paris, which is undergoing extensive renovation and will be the only museum in the world that will have these two collections. The first one is Masterpieces from the Musée d'Orsay, Dorsay, Birth of Impressionism, and the second exhibit is Post-Impressionism Masterpieces from the Musée d'Orsay. They'll be going on through from now through January of 2011. Finally, there's some other developments more in the long term that I wanted to highlight. One of these is the San Francisco Trans Bay Terminal development. This project will replace the current Trans Bay terminal, terminal in downtown San Francisco with a modern regional transit hub connecting Northern California with nine transit systems to the state of California. This includes a high-speed rail from San Francisco to Los Angeles that currently the drive is about seven hours. The, drive will, the high-speed train will take the drive the trip down to two and a half hours from downtown San Francisco to downtown Los Angeles. And this, is, this $2 billion center is expected to open around 2017 which will really give visitors a new way to experience travel in California. And this next year, we'll celebrate 2012, the 75th anniversary of probably San Francisco's greatest known icon, the Golden Gate Bridge. When it opened to the public on May 27, 1937, the Golden Gate Bridge was the world's longest and tallest suspension structure. Its 65 stories were the highest towers west of the Empire State Building. And its two great cables contained enough steel wire, 80,000 miles of wire, to encircle the globe three times. Each year, more than 40 million visitors pass over the Golden Gate Bridge. You may have noticed our California and San Francisco delegates wearing orange ties and orange scarves to symbolize the color of the Golden Gate Bridge, because it's something that is really special not only to visitors who come to San Francisco, but also to us residents alike. For these 75 years, the Golden Gate Bridge has really stood this test of time in making it not only something that's a viable part of transportation, but an icon and a thing that visitors from around the world want to see. So we invite you to visit San Francisco. Next year, Powell will be in the heart of the urban area, a much different experience, but it'll be a part of a taste of the United States. So we encourage you to come to Powell, come early, stay longer, and see some of the many things that San Francisco and all of Northern California and our partners have to offer. Next, I'd like to ask Rodney Fong, who's the chair of the host committee for Pow Wow in 2011, and also the board chair of the San Francisco Convention and Visitor Bureau, to come up and say a few words. Rodney.